Hello, 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 and welcome to tutorial number 28 of our series. In this tutorial, I'm going to show you how to make this kind of a stone field that um, I was inspired by my wife who uh, did this garden project last week. And in, in particular, this kind of a stone assembly or, or, or stone pattern that she's done that you can right now see on, on, on your screen. And I was investigating how could you do that in Grasshopper. And this tutorial is going to be exactly about it. How, how do you design for this kind of a pattern? So actually we will start in Photoshop, not in Rhino, because I first want to plan everything out. And why is this so gray? Uh, wait, let me make it white. There we go. So. I want to plan out how I'm going to approach this problem because it's actually a pretty big problem. Let's say we have a few stones, right? Like a stone like that and a stone like a round stone and a, and a thin stone, right? We, we have three stones and we want to assemble them into this kind of a concentric circular, uh, circular pattern, right? So how, how do we do that? Well. The thing is, you, you, you might think that, well, you just draw a bunch of lines, you divide up the lines and you place the stones, you know, on them. But the problem with that, uh, the problem with placing stones on the curves um, and aligning them with the curves is that they will definitely intersect all the time, right? Especially considering that we have uh, different forms and different shapes of, st of stones and so on. So how the hell do we mitigate that? How do we, how do we fix that? My thoughts are um, to do some packing technique, right? And for that we will need to use loops. So first step is to create this kind of a field, vector field um, effect or, or whatever um, yeah a, a vector field in in, in uh, grasshopper which would kind of showcase or, or not showcase but drive the orientation of our of our stones how they're going to be placed and for that it's easy we will just use a field tool in, in, in grasshopper that's that's not a big deal uh, second step is once we have that field, that let me just draw it out as a rectangle for now, and let's say that all of those vectors are in this rectangle, is to place the first stone, right? So we place the first stone. And then once that stone is placed and oriented correctly within that field, then what we're going to do is step three, and let me zoom into that single place stone, right? It's, it's there. We will offset the boundary of that stone. And on that boundary, we will pick one point and we will place another stone. And let's say, whatever, uh, you know, stone like that, right? And then we will find, okay, so that's, let's say, step number three. And uh, that is not how you write four, <laughs> step number four. Once you have, you know, one, one stone placed like so and the other one placed like so, right? You will, uh, we will find two closest points between these two curves and we will move this stone right to here. So we end up with, um, let me, hmm. How do we do this? Control A, Control T, make smaller. There we go, Control D. Oh my God. And uh, Control L, just not have it gray. Control D again. There we go. Um, so that was step number four, we move it. So in step number five, we have this one stone here and the second stone is eh, kind of moved to touch here. And then in step number six, 
what we're going to do is we're going to take these two stones that we already have right and grasshopper will randomly will need to randomly choose either this or this you know which which one to use as a as an anchoring point so to say and let's say he it, 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 it chooses stone number two and then again does the offset just like in step number three right it does the offset it chooses a point and let's say um, let's be tricky and and let's see it chooses this point right and it places stone number uh stone number three here but then you can see <clears throat> once stone number three is going to be um, actually control c and let's make it a bit more cheeky like that so now you can see as stone number three is going to be moved towards stone number two it's going to intersect with snow that's number three it's going to intersect with stone number one which means that this point is not viable so then what i want to do if they intersect if you can see this intersection here then what it needs to do it needs to choose or pick another point and place the same stone three there right and try again until it doesn't intersect right so that point or or this point right here that is uh, being registered as, as the initial placement of the stone should be able to move, right? So what this tells me is that there will be two loops, um, like a nested loop situation going on. First loop is placing the stones and second loop is going around this offset and finding the correct um, the correct area in which to place the stones, right? And let's see if the stone doesn't fit, if you have something going on like so, right? And you're trying to, let's see, more, more, more. And you're trying to place another stone like, let's see, like this, somewhere near this, this guy right here, right next to this guy. There is no placement on this curve for this stone where you could just place it at and it wouldn't intersect with any other stone so that means that this guy should be then skipped ignored and uh, sh shouldn't produce any result so that's one more rule i know it's a little bit convoluted but um right now but i'm going to try and break it down in in grasshopper so let's begin by unplugging my, my my tablet and plugging in the the mouse and let's switch to Rhino. So now when we are in Rhino, let's first do something uh, something real fun. Let's just draw out a, a very interesting design of a house because I want to have a correct scale uh, for all of this to, to work properly. So let's say it's a small house, uh, only like three meters wide. Up. And let's say the ceiling height is two, two meters, uh, 2.1 meters, back to oh, three meters a rectangle like that and let me just draw out a curve here move it up or, or not to move it up but draw it up uh, by a meter one more meter and I'll just make it a little bit more uh, a little bit more Japanese so I'll just do something like something like that there we go and I'll just mirror it doesn't need to be a, a pretty <laughs> oops doesn't need to be a pretty house whatsoever that's that's fine how you know how it looks this is just for scale i'll trim that up when that one off uh, join this up offset um let's say 300 mil something like that and let me just 
do this and let's do something like that mm -hmm. and then up oh, and something like that this is not a <laughs> house design tutorial whatsoever so you know don't don't mind me just doing a just doing an outline of a house here. Fillet, uh, or rather fillet, zero. Okay, that's, that's gonna be good enough. So I have something like that. Uh, zoom out, rotate 90 degrees, um, extrude, curve, solid, yes. And let's say it's five meters long. Uh, shade it there we go move it to zero okay so we have this this guy right here sure <laughs> um, actually maybe I wanna let me just quickly duplicate edge um, do that uh, join close curve planner surface delete offset surface 125 millimeters mirror it around the midpoint to the other side there we go and just boolean union them together and merge all merge all faces okay so uh, small little a little building here. So now on to the actual, you know, um, a a actual stone making and, and adding them in, in a nice pattern. So let's say I want this area right here. Uh, can I just do three point from here to here to here? Yeah, sure. I want this area right here to have that stone pattern that I was talking about. So before we begin, we need stones, right? And you could use Voronoi 3D and kind of extract a few Voronoi cells and call those stones, but I don't really like that because this method that I'm going to show you will only work with um, convex, yes, with convex curves. So what I mean by that is if you have a stone like this, you know it, a section of a stone like this that's perfect that's good but if you have a section of a stone like this that's not good this this area right here will uh, will will become problematic um, not in the not on the XY plane but either higher or lower that stone will start behaving in a weird way so I prefer to uh, to only use convex con convex concave convex convex stones. Okay. So now let's make some. Um, to do that, I will create. A, should, should, should we? Uh, let's do a sphere. I will make a sphere and I will make sure that ortho snap is turned on and I will just say that it's radius is let's say a hundred millimeters whatever hundred millimeters um, and then I will make it into an ellipsoid so let me zoom into it and I will just scale it down like that and scale it down uh, actually we don't need to scale it down yeah sure something like that we will play around with the mess around with the scale and so on later on for now we just need an ellipsoid sphere so this is completely convex concave convex completely convex surface okay and then in grasshopper i will reference it in as a b-rep set multiple there we go that's my b-rep let me hide it real quick and i want to just like stones kind of are, are cut and um, not cut. How's that? 
when stones break, they break quite uh, cleanly. So what I'm going to do is I will populate uh, geometry to create some, some points here and actually less points, just 10, I think will be fine. And on these points, I will create um, a box. Uh, box, 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 let's say a center box. Perhaps that's, yeah. We'll see if center box is the correct way to go here, but let's try. So now if I just make a box here and let's say, um, Let's see, that box is 20 by 20 by 20. You know, it's it's uh, not great. It's, it's not being oriented correctly. So we need to orient so that the box goes through the, uh, sorry, goes along the surface. So instead of using the points here, I need to use um, perpendicular planes, uh, planes on those particular points on this surface. So for that, I will need to use surface uh, evaluate or evaluate surface tool, which will ask me to give it a surface. So that's our B rep. That's fine. And it asks us to give us uh, to give it a UV coordinate. We don't have a UV coordinate coordinate. We only have points. Uh, so to get a UV coordinate, I will use surface closest point <clears throat> to this one. So even though these points that we have here are indeed on the surface, Grasshopper doesn't know that. And to make them kind of be registered as points that belong to a surface, I need to use the surface CP tool. So it's going to ask me for a base surface, that's our B rep, and it's going to ask us for, uh, ask us for points, sample points. So that's our 10 points that we made here. And then it's going to give us UV coordinates or, you know, UV is like local X, Y coordinates, which I can connect to uh, UV input here. And you can see these small planes are now made and I can use those planes and they are called frames, which is the last output here, frames. I can use those frames or the, those planes as the driving uh, input for my box creation, right? So now I have this going on. And let's think about this. Uh, so I want the boxes to definitely to be bigger like that. I want them to all kind of intersect and cut and, and so on. So let's go for a hundred. Sure. Why not? And also I want them to be a little bit deeper. So right now it's one, but let's do like 10. Yeah, there we go. Okay. So now we have our B rep and we have, our, eh, come on, B rep and we have a bunch of boxes and then I will just use solid difference. So I'll cut away from this B rep with these boxes. And I end up having something like this, which doesn't really look like a stone. But once we let me <clears throat> increase the size of this to maximum of 200. Once we increase the size of this, no, that doesn't work. <clears throat> Why? Oh, yeah, because that's the depth, how, how deep these boxes cut. We need to increase this to, let's say, um, let's try just slowly increasing it until the cuts start meeting, but not too far. I still want to have these triangles here and there and so on, these kind of small, small parts. So that, that kind of looks like a stone, right? Okay. Uh, so I'll just bake it out. Okay. So we have one. Let's make another one. So to make another one where we have populated the geometry uh, option, there is this points op optional pre-existing population. Oh, sorry, blah. not points, seed, uh, seed input here, a random seed for insertion, right? So I can change the seed to, let's see, seed number two. So it just, it just shuffles where, where the points are, are made <clears throat> and it creates stone number two. Let me 
bake it out as well. Actually, I want to cut it a bit more. There we go. And let me bake it out. So we have that guy going on. So this is quite close to just making a bunch of Voronoi cells, but you know, um, we have much more control over it in this way. And number three. There we go. We have three stones here. And that is our stone making tool. Uh, show selected. I'll just delete, uh, delete that part. So I'll just call this stone making tool. Okay. So we have three stones here. Actually, I want to... Now I can just take these three stones and make them... Um, from these three stones, I will make 12 stones in, in, in total. So these ones are thick, right? These stones are, are kind of thick. Sure, um, let's, let's have, it, have them like that. And then I will copy all three of these. And I'll just make a thinner thinner version of them. So these are like slate stones. And then I will copy all six of these <clears throat> again. And I will just scale them down to... Actually, maybe we should just uh, type in 0 0.5, like half the size. So pebbles, like smaller, smaller stones here. Okay. That's about it, right? We kind of kind of have it going now. Okay, um, so stones are done. And we will begin working with the big ones and then we'll uh, kind of revisit the whole definition with the, with the smaller ones here. So now let's, let's begin thinking about this, this, this definition. Uh, where do we start? Should we first make a, a bunch of... Hmm. Perhaps we should first make a bunch of stones. Uh, by, by a bunch of stones, I mean variations of them. So I want every single one of these stones to be... Uh, kind of to, to make a library of stones and every single one of them to have... Um, a rotation attached to them. So how do we do that? Let me let me think. <clears throat> so first of all, let's reference in these guys here. So no, 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 no. actually, let's reference all of them, or or just these. Let's do for all of them like that. So these are B-reps and B-reps are, are kind of slow to, to calculate. So I will convert them to meshes by just uh, typing in mesh B-rep. And we don't need a high resolution here. So I'll just type in um, speed, setting speed. So it's basically going to make a mesh that's lowest resolution possible. Let me hide the stones for a bit. Display, preview mesh edges, there we go. Uh, you know, it's still kind of high resolution, but uh, I don't think we can get away with uh, reducing it even further. Okay, so I have these meshes. And then I will... Um, I will cr get a center point of these meshes. Center. Um, uh, no, mesh volume, mesh volume, or you can just use volume, that's fine as well. Um, both work. Oh, volume is faster. Okay, never mind. I'll just use volume, which gives us a centroid. And I will use that centroid to rotate in 3D to rotate each of these stones. So geometry that's going to be rotated are going to be the stones. And actually, let me grab these so that every single one of them are in their own list. 
um, and then they are going to be rotated around their center points like that and the axis of rotation is going to be well for this you need to look at the bottom left of your of, of your screen and and kind of decide which axis you're going to use and for me i'm going to use the y axis because i want them to rotate kind of in this orientation clockwise or counterclockwise doesn't matter but i want them to be rotated in my case in around the y axis so i'll just type in y connect it like so all right, so now there uh, we have we can rotate them, and how do we? Let me create a range of numbers, and the, that range should be between zero to three hundred sixty. So I'm just creating a panel, just a panel, which is going to be from zero to three hundred and sixty, and that's our domain for the range. Like that and then number of steps should be let's go for 12 maybe let's see how that goes yeah if, if we use number of steps 12 so within that range if we divide it up into 12 parts we have like um, 30 degrees of rotation per each step so that's great so I'll just connect that, that list of numbers into my angle input here. And don't forget to right click on the angle input. That's very important. Right click on it and choose degrees because we want to work with degrees, of course. Okay, so we have that thing going on and I'm just trying to figure out how to make it compact. <laughs> eh, maybe something like this is fine. Okay. So we have that going on and now let me just move these guys around uh, along the negative negative y axis with a range of number not range sorry in this case we will use series of numbers um, so here we have a bunch of copies right and every copy is a bit rotated so i want to move every copy negative uh, in negative y direction um, by bigger and bigger number for each copy so the start number should be zero that's correct the step size uh, i don't remember the, the stones were like a hundred millimeters right so let's say the step size is a hundred like that, uh, more, uh, 200, step size is 200, and count should be how many numbers from range we have, so I'll just measure list length, like that, and that's how many, you know, how many movements we need to make, okay, so we have that done, and actually let's check out how pretty they are a bunch of stones all of them rotated so we have a library and our grasshopper script will choose from that library the most fitting uh, not not the most fitting but a random a random stone from this library and it will uh, will just kind of um, attach it right so we have that done that's that's good and now we need and and let me just actually group and probably just flatten this one out there we go so we have this group here and we call it uh stone rotator <laughs> i don't know <laughs> stone library call it whatever you want and i'll just place it here we will be using that in a bit now for placing those stones we need some sort of a driving field and thankfully under vector we have field option here where i can specify a point chart a spin force a vector force all of these crazy things so in this case i will just specify a point charge that's the only one that i that i need no wait 
point charge bad uh, spin force because I want all of these stones to kind of do a spiral, right? So spin force like that. And let's see what it asks us of center and orientation of spin disk. Okay, for that, I will just use a, po a point, right? Point, set one point, this guy, connect. That's easy. And let me hide that point. I don't want to accidentally move it. <clears throat> so we have a point there and you can see a small disk is made. So I need to increase its radius maybe? I don't know, but let's try. So I'll just increase this its radius to even more. Let's just create a panel with a thousand and connect it like so. Yeah, sure. So now I can see the radius. The strength we don't care about, the decay we don't care about, the bounds. Um, I will not have any bounds for this field. We don't care about the, the bounds. Okay, so we have this, this um, spin force. And the thing about fields is that it's hard to see, you know, you, you can't really see how, how they work. Uh, so to, to actually see them, I will use field line to actually see how you know, the directionality that the field is going to take. Field line, uh, which will ask me to give it a field. And also it will ask me to give it points to start from. I don't have any points. So let's just grab this rectangle here and reference it in as a curve. Set one curve. And just populate. Populate 2D with 100 points, sure and connect that to the point input here. And number of samples, accuracy, method. So let's go for number of samples and set it to 10,000. That's a thousand, 10,000. There we go. Yeah, so we end up with something like this. I think that's fine. Um, Spin E force, right? Just as expected. Okay, so uh, once we see that it kind of works and it's all nice and dandy, I'll delete that part. That was just for visual checking and I'll grab a cup of coffee. A cup of coffee, <laughs> a cup of coffee. Okay, and how do we move on from here? So the first thing is, hmm, perhaps the, the, the first thing is to, to place, show selected, this guy for instance, to take this guy and I will just place it somewhere in the middle of this field somewhere here and this is going to be our keystone so it's going to be a big boy i want it to be something like this maybe and maybe it's sticking out a bit more and maybe it's a bit like that i don't know i'm, I'm just messing out uh, messing around and let us reference it in as a brep or yeah, sure, as a brep, set one brep and make it into a mesh. Again, mesh brep, speed, setting speed, connect. There we go. And let me hide it in Rhino. So we have this, this, this brep here. Okay, that's our keystone from which we will start, from which we will start um, doing uh, all, all of these rotations and then so on. Before we begin though, I need to rotate this keystone so that it's also aligned with, um, with this field here. So what I'm going to do is I will, <laughs> I will create a section not a section. Um, 
So everything here that we're doing is uh, located on the XY plane, right? So I want to simplify this and I want to work to make Grasshopper work with 2D and then kind of mimic or not mimic, but reapply 3D stones onto a solved 2D pattern. And the way we do 2D is if I go to intersection and I go to physical, I can find, no, that's not physical, mathematical. I can find the mesh plane intersection, mesh plane. So we have a mesh here and our plane is going to be XY, XY plane, and I connect it like so. And you can see here, and let me hide the mesh, you can see here we have a section, right? And it's, it's flat. And actually, we will be most of the time working in top view as well. So we have this section here, right? And now I want to rotate the section and of course the, the mesh, mesh as well uh, according to um, according to this field that we have. So to rotate it, I will need to use orient, orient direction. And now, okay, let's let's start. So geometry that we're going to orient is going to be actually our section. Again, we're solving everything in 2D and then we will reapply the same orientation in, uh, for our 3D stones. So I'm solving, I am going to orient this section. Reference point, so from which point do I orient it? And the reference point is going to be um, area centroid, I think. Let's let's think about it for a bit. Um, nom, 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 nom. Yeah, sh sure. Let's let's just do area centroid. Area centroid, just like that. Okay. And direction of orientation for this particular. Um, stone actually let me show selected and i want all of these to have the same direction so i need a longer edge right so right now the direction for the stone is um, y direction but i actually want it to be like that because all of directions initial di directions for these stones are x right so i want the, to, to, to kind of use x for this one as well Okay, so direction A is going to be X, like that. And now, uh, let me hide it, so that is not in the way. So we have this uh, center point here and the initial direction is going uh, to the right. And now we need a vector that would show uh, what kind of direction should it have according to this field. Right, so I have a field here and I will use evaluate field tool right here, evaluate field. And it's going to ask me for field to evaluate. So the, you know, field goes into field and point to evaluate the field at, which is going to be our center point right here, right? So we're evaluating the field at this particular point to get a direction and a strength. So I connect it like so. So the output from evaluate field that we get is a tensor, which is uh, just think of it as a vector, a direction, and also strength. We don't care about the strength, we only care about the, the direction, right? So I will just connect tensor to direction B input here. And I will also, for point, target point B, we will not be moving the stone. Uh, it's going to stay in place, it's just going to rotate. So for uh, our target point, we're going to use the same area centroid, like so. And you can see it gets rotated. And also, scaled. Oh, right, right, right. It gets scaled if this vector is shorter or smaller than our initial x vector, which has the length of 1. 
right? So to mitigate that, I will just right click on direction B input here and choose unitize. And now it doesn't get scaled anymore. Okay. So that is done. And this is a bit wire fiesta, but what can you do? Maybe we can kind of, yeah, there we go. Something like this. So this is just create, create field. <clears throat> and this is, um, or actually there's one more thing that we forgot to do. Uh, we have our mesh here, right? So let me just create a mesh co component. We have our mesh here, right? And we are not orienting the mesh. So I will do that and I will do that very easily by just going to transforms, utilities, or not even that. Yeah, oh, sure, we can just go through to transforms, utilities and choose transform, or I can just type in transform, transform, which will ask me for a mesh uh, or for any kind of geometry like that. And it will ask me for transformation uh, value or transformation input. Every rotation, movement, orientation, scaling and so on has a transformation output X transform output X, which you can just connect to your uh, to the transform input T and it will use exactly the same transformation method. Um, yeah, it, it will just use exact exactly the same transformation method uh, for for another type of geometry that you input. OK, so now let me just create a curve and I will just right click on it and name it initial curve and create a mesh, right click, click on it and call it initial mesh. So starting curve, starting mesh. Okay. We're, we're getting there so far. So now <clears throat> things are going to start getting a bit, a bit more, um, a bit more tricky. So let's think about this for a second. We have a... Hmm. We will need to start looping things, but I'm just thinking when should we start doing it? Should I first kind of de um, design everything and then start, uh, then revisit everything and start looping or what? Maybe let's first design everything. <clears throat> okay, so we have our initial curve, right? An initial mesh. Let me hide hide the mesh for now, and I will I will say mm, offset offset this curve by some amount. And I need to uh, need to say what what's the amount. To do that, I will be a little bit cheeky, and I will just say, okay, what's the length of this line, for instance, 194. Okay, so that means if we specify an offset of 100 like that. There is no stone that's going to be placed uh, from the library, which is going to immediately intersect with the initial, uh, initial, initial uh, stone here. Mm -hmm. Okay, so so we have that offset. Uh, we have that offset here, <clears throat> and then I will um, evaluate that this curve right here, the offset curve, or can we use evaluate length rather than evaluate? Evaluate length, 0 0.5. I just want to see how, how this works. That's zero, that's one, that's perfect. Okay. So we will evaluate 
that offset curve at some point doesn't matter which one for now we will automate this we will evaluate it and we will say what will we say mm, we will say curve Should we need to, sorry I'm, I'm 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 just thinking we have this library of, of meshes here right where is it there it is we have a library of meshes what are you you're you're oh, okay you're you're that we have a library of meshes here and I want all of them to have a section so section uh, not a section, sorry, intersection between the plane and a mesh. So mesh plane, mesh plane intersection. I'm just repeating the same uh, thing I did, uh, where was it? Did here. Mesh plane, X, Y plane, like that. If I hide it now, you can see I have all of these intersections. Okay, that's good. So we have a bunch of curves and then I need to pick one. So list item, I will pick one curve and why do you give me a grafted output? No, 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 oh, po, 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 po. don't simplify, just flatten it out. Don't give me a grafted output. We have 156 curves and we have 156 meshes. That's perfect. Um, so I, from these curves, from these section curves, I want to pick one, but I want to pick it at random. So I will need a random value that I'm going to feed in here. And that random value, first of all, it's going to be an integer number for, for sure, because our index needs to be an integer number. So I'll just right click on the random component here and choose integer numbers like that. And then range should be, so it should be able to pick any stone on the list that we give it. So the range should be list length, like that. We measure that we have 156 stones, right? And we measure the length of the list, so we, we get that answer, 156. So it's going to get a random value between 0 and 156. And it comes up with 120. So we get this guy right here. Okay, so I can call this thing stone picker. Stone picker. Okay, we have that. And now I need to take the stone and and let me actually make it into a curve. Oh, I also need list item. <laughs> I keep forgetting list item. Like or rather, we will do that later. For now, let's do it in 2D. I, I wanted to do the, um, the, the the mesh extraction as well, but we don't care about that. Okay, so we have our, our curve here, and I'll, I can just say picked curve right here. And what are we going to do with that curve? So here we have our evaluated point. So we need to take this curve and move it to that that particular point. Um, ba -ba 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 -ba. So first things first, I will move. Or do we first orient it? We can orient it first. Orient. Nope, that's the wrong orient. <laughs> <laughs> orient uh, direction, orient direction. So this curve get, uh, should be oriented from its center point, so area, 
area centroid from the center point according to direction x. I'm just repeating the same thing that we did before. So it's getting oriented from here to this, uh, this, this point here. So orientation is basically movement and rotation at the same time. So it's going to be oriented to here. For some reason in a very weird manner. And the direction, target direction, will need to be... Mm, 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 according to the field. So we'll need to evaluate uh, the field again. Evaluate field. So this field gets evaluated. The only field that we have gets evaluated on this particular point. Right? So we get the vector. And that's going to be the direction that the new stone should take. So you can see that it's now being oriented on that particular field. Okay, we have that going on, which is which is perfect. And what now? <laughs> what now? What now? What now? Um, boom, 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 boom. So it got oriented. Oh, right, right, right. And we need to do the expression, uh, or sorry, unitize uh, part so that it doesn't get scaled down. Okay. So now um, we're at that step. If you watched the start of the video where I explained all of the steps, we're at that step where this stone should be moved to touch the stone right here. And how do we do that? So the, the, the way we will do that is by using a tool that's called curve proximity curve proximity, like that, and it's going to basically give us give us two points, right? Two closest points between any two curves. So our curve B is going to be this curve right here, and our curve A, let me move back this curve proximity to here, is going to be our initial curve here. Right. And actually, let me uh, let me do this. I'll explain why I'm doing it in a bit, but for now, I just this does nothing. It's just you know a bunch of repeated same containers of curves, and it connects like so. So initial curve and uh, oriented curve get these two points here. Right, two closest points between these two curves. And now I am going to create a vector, vector uh, between those two points, <clears throat> um, like that, and oops, like, come on, like that and that. And let me do vector, vec, Vector display, vector display, just to see how it looks like. Oh, it's going uh, the, the other way around. So no, 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 like that and that then. There we go. That's, that's good. So we have this vector. And yeah, it's, it's like so. And now I will use this vector to move this small stone to this big stone here. So the small stone is going to be moved and it's going to be moved with, with this vector. Oh, just snaps there, right? Okay, so we have that done. And I'm, I'm, I'm starting to hide ev uh, everything that I don't need to see. And maybe we should move it here. And that's a valid point. That's offset like that. Actually, we can do a uh, we, or, yeah, we can do the offset and the evaluate point to just show you how this will work. So now, if I were to move this evaluate point, 
you can see that it will always snap it will always snap this this stone to my um to my initial uh, it will always snap stone number two to stone number one right and let me do it in a bit more uh, coherent way like that see that's pretty cool right and also it's of course rotating according to the uh, orientation of the field okay so we have that going on and now what do I want to do with this hmm well I think here we need to create a loop right because now we have the initial curve and we have the new curve here but I need a, a loop that would then say that okay so now we have two curves and just pick one right so this is where we actually start creating a loop so I'll create loop start and this is Inamona plugin. If you don't know it, then what are you doing with this tutorial? This is advanced. Go to my previous tutorials, which are much more uh, simple, where I explain Anemonia much better than I'm going to do it here. Uh, we have loop end. We connect loop start with loop end. And now let's give it just uh, like two, uh, two steps. Rather, for now, I'm just going to have repetition set to zero. We will have a button, of course. And now let's see our, our inputs. So let, let, let me think. Mm. OK, so D0 is going to be our initial curve. And that's why I created these two, by the way, because, you know, initial curve go goes in here, initial curve goes out there. That's good. Um, together with the initial curve, we will have... Or for, for now, let's do it with only curves, and then we will incorporate the meshes later. Okay, so initial curve goes in here, initial curve goes out here. Uh, loop and let me just place it somewhere way here and this guy needs to be um, needs to be joined in with the initial curve uh, list right with, with this list here so I will um, Actually, I should call this uh, sections list like that. So I will need to merge this uh, initial curve with this new curve here like that. So these two get merged and now I connect them here. Okay. And for some reason they get grafted, so I'll just flatten it out. All right. So now it does this. And if I were to repeat it once more, it, oh my God. Okay, so it does that. So, oh, that's a, that's a yikes. Yeah, boys, we did a fractal, uh, so let's not crash our computers. And this happens because after the first step, um, we don't have only one curve here. Rather, we have more than one. We have like uh, two curves here. So then it makes uh, two more uh, rather than one more. And uh, or why does it make three? Oh, it makes four. Oh, no, 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 no. That's a very, very bad thing. So we always need to choose one stone onto which we're going to keep attaching a new one, right? 
So the way we are going to do it is I'm going to say list item. <coughs> Sorry. List item like that. Or we can, oops, come on. We can just connect it like so. And list item should grab <coughs> a random stone from the list. So random, random stone from the list. Um, like that. Again, it's going to be an integer. So I just right click on it and choose integer numbers. And its range should be according to how many stones we have, right? So list length, list length like that. That's the range. And then number of random values should be one, but the seed should always change, right? According to at which iteration are we currently at. So I can just grab this counter, which counts the uh, loop iterations, and I can just plug it to the seed input like so. So it will re-randomize it or reshuffle it every time the loop restarts. Okay, so we now we, uh, sure, it chose this stone right here, and I will connect it to the offset input like so, and I will also connect it to the curve proximity input like so. And I will group it and call it choose random stone from placed stones. Uh, I would say from stone library, but actually the stone library is, is right here, right? All of, where, where are they? Hello? Not that. That. All of these stones I consider to be the stone library and this is, uh, these are like placed stones right here. Okay, we have that done. So now it shouldn't make any any problems for us anymore yeah yeah that's good that's good uh it, it, it's getting there it's not great but it's uh we're, we're getting there at least it's not multiplying like a rabbit in spring um okay what do we what do we do now so now I need to say if hmm. so we have this loop that that will keep placing stones but we need another loop okay so we need another loop for it to find where to place a stone right because right now it's choosing uh you know the initial uh curve and then it's, it's just always giving me 0 0.337 uh point 0 0.337 around that curve and just placing a stone there right so we need to automate this rotation so that it finds a position of the stone where it wouldn't intersect with any other already placed stone. So for that, we will need a loop again. Um, let me just think about this. Well, let's just do loop start, loop end. Okay, so that's that's regular, not, 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 nothing too fancy. Um, trigger, do we need a trigger? Maybe we don't, um, but we need, yeah, we definitely need this loop. And now how does this work? Let me actually jump back to repetition zero. So the initial one. So we have our offsetted curve and it's going to be evaluated. So let's say, um, it should be, the loop should run for 30 steps maximum, like that. 
And as it's running, So it's going to run, like when, when we do it like this, it's going to just run for 30 steps, right? As it, the loop is running, it should count from 0 until 30, meaning if we have a range, a range of numbers between 0 and 1, and amount of numbers is 30 oh yeah range always gives us plus one uh, for some reason so I'll just right click on the n input here expression and type in x minus one like that so now we have actually 30 numbers so if we have this going on then I can see list um, list item list item from from this list of numbers it should retrieve an item at which the current current counter is at let me grab a button to see how this works like that so if i grab a panel of course it's zero now but now as i reset it it increases to one and then for some reason jumps back to zero i don't know why but we don't care as long as it's keep it keeps increasing that's fine which means i can connect this list item to my l input here instead of the slider so we automate it so now it's going to automatically do that and try and find you know so it's now it's uh, trying to find the correct uh, position correct orientation i don't know how to how to, how to call it um all right how does it know that it found the correct position Ooh. how does it know that it found the correct position Well, first of all, okay, so there are like three things to check. First one is, are, is this stone intersecting with any other stone on this list? So I need to find uh, collisions. How, how, how is it called? Intersections, region, no, no. Oh my god. Collision. Collision one many. Test for one and many collisions between objects. Okay. So what is testing? Uh, object for collision. So the thing that is testing is this stone right here. Right? This guy is testing out if, if, if he's making a collision with what? With... Um, all of the stones that are in this list here for now we just have one but there's going to be plenty as you can probably expect so i just connect the sections list to my collision uh, obstacles input here so now we have an answer true true if objects collide with any what the oh touching is also colliding okay uh, so touching is also colliding. How do we fix that? We fix that by using scale. I will just scale this bad boy by 0 0.99 or 0 0.9. Yeah, sure. 0 0.99. That should be good enough. Uh, around its center point. Or this will make it a bit slower, but at least we can actually see what's going on. So this point, we get a center point, we scale this point around the center point to just slightly 99% of its original size. And now we use it as a collider. 
uh, for, for checking the collisions if it's colliding with this point, uh, with this stone right here. Okay. Uh, so we have that and now it should be false. Yes, it is. Good. So now it's false. It's false, which means that we can connect this statement to E input here. And E input for loop end is exit. Should the loop stop? Right? So now, uh, shit. <laughs> The loop should stop once this um, statement is false, right? And here it says, I will stop if you give me a true statement. So uh, what we need to do is we need to say, is it equal, is this collision statement equal to zero? Because true is one, zero, uh, false is zero. So is it equal to zero? And if it is, then it will say true. And then we connect it to E. Uh, I could also use gate not, uh, that, that would work as well. But uh, for what I'm going to do next, I need to use this equality uh, statement. So now it's set to true, and which means that immediately the loop will not run. It will just place the point and say that that works. That's That's good. Okay, so we have that done. Um, for now, this is actually fine. Uh, let me let me make all of this like that and check if point inter if not point check if curve intersects with any other curve. Okay. We have that, and this is orientation, and proximity, and movement. So I will call this move, um, or rather pick. No, it's already picked. So uh, move and rotate the picked stone curve to a point, whatever. We have that going on, and this is loop start, loop end, so we will not be messing around with that too much. All right, so now, technically, if I increase the repetitions, nice. Not nice. It's as if, wait, let me do a hundred. Oh, right, right, I forgot. That's that's what it does. So when you try to do nested loops in Anemona, this setup where you have a loop in a loop will not work as it is. You need to do one more thing, and that is create a new D1 input here and create a new D1 input here. And this one can be empty, that's whatever. And you need to uh, take your loop end output and connect it to D1. You do this so that this loop communicates with this one that I'm not finished yet, I'm not finished yet, I'm not finished yet, I'm not finished yet, right? So once it's finished, then it says I'm done. And then this loop can continue on right and then kind of the big loop restarts so now if i run this fuck <laughs> wait why are you not working oh you're just orange why are you orange input parameter d1 failed to collect data no data here True, loop end. Uh -huh, uh -huh, uh -huh. Let's think. 
all right we can't just do it like that uh, or rather we can't just do it like that it will freak out instead what we need to do is we need to give it something to run through so i'm just going to give it the correct position of the point or the current position of the point to d0 like so and then it should work sorry about that still doesn't work that's super super nice uh why why are you not working let me just double check my notes okay so there was one thing that i messed up with and i had to pause the video to actually uh figure it out and it was this trigger right here um or rather this this input right here didn't uh for some reason didn't register and it wasn't because of this it wasn't because of the loop end it was actually because of d0 uh right here actually let me make it like so like that and rather let's 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 uh, do, 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 let's actually do it like that um, it was because this input right here was empty and when this when this input is empty it means um, the, the this loop doesn't know when to uh, when you when to restart when to start counting again because here we have a button right and I, I will delete that button so the the way how it understands that it should count start counting again start doing the loop again is when any of the inputs changes here right so what i'm going to do is from the initial loop start so this is the big loop from this loop start where i have the counter i'll plug it in to d0 input data to loop input here so every time when this counter changes this d, d0 will know that loop should start and now what we should see is this right okay still a bit weird because you would think that you know in in, in 10 steps it should make at least one another uh, you know one more stone around the big one but it doesn't and the reason why it doesn't is because sometimes let's say like here sometimes it is that it scale uh, since we're scaling it inwards like so it doesn't collide with anything right it doesn't collide with its original uh original stone here so it's just sitting there right and then uh, saying that I'm, I'm just placing a stone and a stone and a stone so what we're doing is we're making a bunch of duplicates thus we need one more rule here and we need to check whether or not um let me close the another tab here that that i don't need sorry sorry for this um so what we want here is we want to ask is this point the new point that we are creating is it already in any one of existing curves if it is then the stone is also it shouldn't be placed right so we ask we will ask in curves point in curves multiple curves point in curves so this center point is it in any of the existing curves so sections list again right long wire i hate long wires but what can you do and it will give us uh, answers right uh, two if it's inside zero if it's outside one if it's coincident right so i will take all of those answers and i will do mass addition uh, to all of those answers that is not mass addition what am i doing mass addition i will do this and the result 
I will uh, how do we do this so we have the result and this should be also equal it should check for equality is it equal to zero so how do we make it nicer what if we do mass addition like so and just check for equality like that I think that's gonna work because this one gives us true which means it's uh, which means this is becomes false and that yeah that that should work okay so the way this this works is if this is inside of a curve it's not going to give a zero right if if, if a stone that's being created is already placed in a inside of a stone it doesn't intersect with the walls of the existing stone but it's inside of it right so this will give us not zero and also if that new placed stone intersects with a stone this will give us not zero right but if a new stone doesn't intersect and is not placed inside of an existing stone both of these will give us zero so once we add them up the result is going to be zero and the quality will turn to true and the loop will stop by saying that correct this is actually what we need to to use what we can use okay so let me increase or let me restart oh 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 uh, actually are you working you're kind of working but you're weird why are you weird hmm. let's think let's think let's think it's jumping why is it jumping false zero point in curves Hmm. All of that is correct. And then it gives us a boolean. It just takes this polyline curve and moves it there. Um, I think the constant output is at fault here because it sometimes kind of... It sometimes doesn't... Hmm. That, that that doesn't save the initial step. So let me right click on the small loop end and choose output after last. Right? So it's only going to output the last one. Oh, that's much better. Okay. Okay, so that's that 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 is that's going. That's that's working. Okay. So output after last is important. Whew, we're getting there. We're getting there. Okay, so we have that done. We have that done. This is getting saved as a bunch of curves. That's perfect. Uh, why are all the stones the same? What the hell? Stone picker section length. Oh, that's because it always it, it just has one seed right it, it it will always give us stone number 120 so we need to change the seed every time uh, for for every loop for every big loop so for counter i will just choose oh sorry for seed i will just reuse that counter there like so reset oh that's oh. that's so nice okay okay that 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 works that works that is very very nice let's increase it to a hundred and see all of the problems that we're going to start getting there we go that's that's the first one stop uh, these guys the reason why these guys happen is because 
if you have a stone and you work around the whole perimeter around the stone and grasshopper kind of doesn't find any position any placement where that stone would fit it will just say fuck it you know <laughs> final position I'll, I'll, I'll just add it there right that is a no-no we need to fix the big no-no right here and the way we fix it is by using a tool that's called filter uh, filter stream filter okay so the way this tool works is it asks us for an index right so the index needs to be an index is either zero or one or false or true right so this answer for equality is should the loop be closed did did i find the a placement of the stone where it doesn't intersect with anything and it's placed properly right and it turns to true every time when it finds it right so if i connect it to this output here from equality to my filter input g here i can see that <laughs> It's only going to let information through that is connected to input 1. And information 0 is not going to be let through, right? So, and if this turns to false, right? If I couldn't find any uh, position for, for the stone to be placed, then this will let as zero or, or input zero to go through. So input zero, I will keep empty, meaning that nothing goes through, but input one, I will connect this, this curve here, right? To, to input one, like that. And then instead of just simply connected, connecting the curve to my merge, where I keep kind of adding the stones to the list, I will use the filter input here just like that okay this should definitely solve it let's reset amp up the repetitions i want to see how the stones look like as well uh, where are you there you go ah, nice Okay, so now there should be no intersections whatsoever. And it doesn't seem that there... Oh, fucker. Oh, never mind. It fixed itself. <laughs> that, that's nice. Okay, that's good. That's good. That, that, that means it works and it kind of orients itself properly and so on. Uh, what else should we do before we make it, you know, 3D? Oh, man. What do we... Oh, right, right. We don't want the stones to be placed outside of our region, right? So, I am going to take this curve and scale it down a bit. Something like this. Actually, let me copy and scale something like that that's our stone garden curve and let me create a curve component here right click set one curve just a rectangle actually where is it i don't need the initial one okay so we have our, our curve component here and i will just say okay rule number three are these area points in uh, curve point in curve so we have the center point here is it inside of this curve right and the answer is it should always be inside wait uh, uh, let's think okay so if this is true or if this is false it's good if this is false it's good if this is false it's bad so i can say 
Is it equal? zero is it equal to zero so if it says yes that means it's bad I mean if it says yes it gives me a number which is not zero and then I add that number to mass addition which gives me a result that is not zero and then this one gives me a false statement meaning that this will keep trying okay that's good so I just connect it like so here so third rule is done let me eh, make them somehow compact eh, good enough okay so now the stones will not go outside of, of this region right here. All right, all right, what else? What else, what else, what else? Okay, um, to speed it up, I will need, show selected, show these, to speed it up, I will need first to calculate with the large stones, which should be a bit larger as well, I think. And let me find the biggest one, do a bounding box and just measure distance. Just to see if the offset is correct, 228 and how big is the offset? A hundred, uh, no, a hundred and uh, fifteen for the offset. There we go. Okay, so we, we, <laughs> uh, before we begin, we need to work with the meshes, right? Yeah, yeah, let's, let's, let's do the meshes part first. Um, so let me take all of this starting code here or script or whatever you call it here and I will just group it and call it starting condition starting condition okay and that's good because here we have initial mesh and I will just create one more input and connect it like so and I will create one more output and this is D2 is going to be where we're going to be dealing with the meshes, right? Um, D, D0 is the curves, D2 is the meshes. And D1 is just a trigger. Uh, we don't care about D1. Okay, so mesh component like that. And Jesus Christ, so many wires. I guess that's why people like coding, huh? Okay, so mesh component here, we will use merge for sure. And we will keep adding stuff to, to, to our mesh recording stream, uh, which is these D2, right? So we have a starting mesh here and let me click that button so that not everything is orange so we have our starting mesh and now we need to add this mesh right here to to our starting mesh so where, where is it uh, stone picker and here we just pick a curve right but no 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 this time we need list item list item this time we need to pick a stone, which is, you know, that the stone list is right here in the move uh, list. I can show you. Better to show you, right? We have a stone list and with list item, we pick a section of, of from that stone list. But here with the same index, which we get from the random, we pick also the the stone, right? So it's it's this bad boy here. 
and then we have orientation and movement for that section and remember where we used transforms uh, we will do the same thing because this is a transformation and this is a transformation but instead of doing transform two times we first we will combine those two transformations from orient and, and move um, and to combine them i will use compound compound two transformations basically just adds them up and holding down the shift key i will connect both of them into one uh, transformation like so okay and now we have our mesh here which i don't want to move too far out let me create a mesh component here <clears throat> so that the wire is a bit more clean like that so we have a mesh and we have a transformation for that mesh which means we can just use transform like that how does it look like it looks perfect okay so mesh gets uh, gets transformed and now we will just oh yeah right we need to use the filter as well uh, for uh, there's the transformed mesh of course so i'll just connect the transform mesh uh, input to transformed mesh input to uh, one and then this filter comes into this merge right here meaning that this new small mesh gets added to the list and it will continue on from here on out okay let me hide everything and let's see so custom preview and d2 swatch so this is going to be all saved meshes so i just want them to be uh, maybe we can do moss green something like that why not uh, display preview mesh just off so that it's not you know not ugly okay so we have custom preview of all recorded meshes and then i want a custom preview of a mesh that is currently being uh, placed here and i want i will make it uh white sure white okay so we have that and then we have a brep uh, component here for our library of stones actually i want to have two brep components this and this and i will call this uh stones big and then stones small like that because first we want to fill in this whole landscape with large stones and then once once it's filled we want to fill in the gaps with the small stones right so i will do stones big i will select the big ones and set multiple and i will select the small ones set multiple so we have two libraries here let me hide and let me how do we do this now uh, okay planner surface so you just do you and maybe you are moved down a bit and <sighs> sorry I'm, I'm, I'm just thinking about it <laughs> and maybe planner surface here and this one is slightly up like that 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 will look nice maybe a bit too high up just a little bit yeah that's good duplicate border that that uh and select and select delete select select loft uh -huh. delete select 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 join okay Sorry for that. I just wanted it to be a bit nicer. Um, and we have some ground condition. We have the stones. 
Uh, let's see, Arctic view. Yeah, looks good. Um, shall we? Shall we try it out? I think we shall. So I will connect big stones to my B rep right here. We will begin with the big stones and I will say, let's say 2,500 steps for, for this guy. And there it goes. And perhaps we should change this to top view. So now let me make this shaded. No, top uh, wireframe is better. Let me kind of position this. And now I'm going to go and have a smoke. And I'll leave you to look at the sped up version of this bad boy. So uh, I'll talk to you real soon. Bye. Okay, so it's kind of slow, but that's expected. This is not optimized in any way. So what I'm going to do is I'll just quickly disconnect the slider. Now it should stop. Okay. And I will connect the small stones. I will not let it run for, you know, for, for the whole, uh, for the whole area here. So I'll just connect the small stones like that. Actually, let's grab a panel and just connect the counter to the panel. So we're at iteration number 592. Reconnect this. So now it's going to start placing smaller stones and then finding where, where to put them. So you, you get the idea, right? It's first going to fill, uh, first going to fill in with the big stones, and now it's gonna do the same thing with the small ones, and it it just fills in the gaps here. All right, let me disconnect it again, and now for what I find quite cool, so that this looks. This looks nice, <laughs> right? So uh, what I find quite cool is that this field that we have right now is just a single spin force. But what if we have two points with uh, spin forces, right? Uh, let me disable all of the previews and I will do the same thing like field, field line, line here that's the field um, and I will or rather no sorry let's do one more spin force so I'll just make a copy of it and I will just place another point somewhere here set one point so now we have two spin forces one here and one here right and let me, you, you can't just connect two fields to the field line input, you need to merge those fields. So I'll use merge fields component, like so. Connect it to field line, uh, point again, populate 2D. Let's get a curve, CRV, set one curve. Uh, it's going to be populated with 100 points. So we have valid that field at 100 points. And, uh, or rather, let's do 500 points. Like, like that. 
let me hide the points themselves. So this is the the flow that 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 we get, and let me mess it up a bit e e even more. So we have something like this going on. Um, can we make the radius a bit smaller? Five hundred. Oh, five hundred. And yeah, that's good. Five hundred here. That's good. Okay, so we're we're making this kind of a peanut shape. Okay, um, so that's the field now that we've created. Delete all of that, and I will just replace field and put here with a new merged field. And there's one more that is here. I'm just uh, replace it there as well. Okay, so now let's look at the preview of that stone there, preview of that one, uh, join uh, or rather connect the big stones first, connect the slider, wait for it to do its magic. Perhaps I should show selected. Perhaps I should move the big stone in between those two points. Repeat. Wow. Oh, it doesn't like. It. Oh, never mind. It works. <laughs> I thought it didn't didn't like that. Mm hmm. Actually, maybe we should show as it's being moved. I will just show the curve rather than the the stones themselves and make the curve red. There we go. So it's searching and it's placing just like that. Okay. So again, I will give it a bit of time to. Uh, do its magic and then we'll take a look at what it came up with. Okay, I don't have that that much time, so let's just call it a call it a day. So this tutorial right here, it it doesn't show. Let me actually, I'll just make this zero. There we go. Uh, so t this tutorial right here, it doesn't actually show uh, an optimized version of this uh, particular scene. It's rather just uh, a proof of, proof of concept, right? Something that is uh, that can be definitely optimized and to make it run faster, to make it uh, be more accurate, and so on. But this is something just that I thought is quite interesting. How to, how to make uh, Grasshopper do something that is very human, very you know man-made. Um, Let's go for Arctic view to, to, to finish it off. I believe this is quite quite nice, right? Uh, the, the, the way everything is assembled and so on, everything fits quite nicely. Um, for those of you who are lazy and want this uh, definition, you can get it on my Patreon page that I have now. Like this channel has a Patreon page now and if you support it, uh, you can just, you know, get this 3D model and get this definition. If not, then just follow through with this tutorial and you'll have the definition either way. So, you know, whichever 
tickles your pickle, so to say. I hope you enjoyed this one and uh, leave a like, subscribe, and I'll see you next time. Bye.